As you recall in the previous training video, we created a query by using the query wizard. Here I want to show you how you can create a query from scratch or by design, where you don't have to go through all the steps in the query wizard to get what you need. So let's come up here, click on the Create tab, go to the Queries group, and there it is, Query by Design. Sounds like some fashion company that's doing your query. It's by design. Let's go ahead and click on it. it creates the query, but before we can get into it, it says, wait a second. Remember, your queries has to be based upon either one or more tables and or queries. So it has a list here of all the tables that we can add to our query. Do I have any queries? Of course not. You can see none over here. And then both, it just shows the tables. So to be able to add a query to the query here, or a table to the query, you can do it one of many ways. You can either go ahead and double click to add it, and there you go. Or with it selected, you can go ahead and click add. Of course, now I have two here and I just need one, not a duplicate, but let me click on add again. So I can show you that every time you add more than the original, you have the original name, then the original name plus one, as it were, and then plus two or the second copy of the original. And so to get rid of these duplicates here, let me close out, you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either right click on the title bar and click on remove, or you can click on the title bar and hit the delete key, and there you go, we're back. In fact, let's go ahead and remove that as well. And then to bring up that table window again, so we can add a table or a query or a combination of them to our query, you can either come up here on the Design tab to the Query Setup group and click on Show Table, same window, or, let me close out, right-click anywhere in this gray area up at the, in the top section here and go down to Show Table. And so let's just go ahead and, well, the other way that you can go ahead and add your tables or queries or both is if you want to add more than just one at the same time, you know, do a block selection, use the Shift key. So if I want to select everything from this point, or let's do that point, down to the bottom, hold down the Shift key and then click the bottom, and it selects everything in between. And then you can click Add. Or if it's nonlinear, then just go ahead and select one, hold down the Control key, and click any others, and then click Add, and there you go. I'm just going to look at Employees, double-click, add that, and close out. And so your query is divided into two sections. You have the top part that has a list of, well, all the tables, either from a table or a query. And from those, you want to be able to pick those fields you want to add down below into the grid or into this bottom section, the grid here, those fields that you want to show up in the data sheet view when you view your query. So let's go ahead and, well, I can't see all the fields here without scrolling, and I don't like scrolling, so let me hover over the bottom border of this table until I can see arrows pointing up and down, click and drag, and I don't get enough room. So if that annoys you and you want more room, then you got the split bar here that when you hover over it, you can see arrows pointing up and down. Go ahead and click and drag either up or down, in this case down to give us more room, and then click and drag the bottom border, and oh, that's nice. Now I feel better. And then to go ahead and add the fields here from your table to the grid down below, you can see each row has its own name, so here's a list of, well, this row is for all the fields, or the name of the fields that have been added. This will show what table they're coming from if we have more than one table. And then these other fields we'll cover in a later training video, how you can sort that field alphabetically, ascendingly, descendingly, condescendingly. No, I'm kidding on that last one. And then whether or not we want to show that, and the criteria. Go ahead and let's double click, which is one way to add a field down below to the grid the employee's last name, so you can see the name of the field and from what table it's pulling from. And the criteria, you can say, well, all those employees whose last name begins with the letter M. Like I said, we'll cover that in a later training video. So to keep it simple, to add those fields down below to the grid, you can double-click to add them, or you can go ahead and click, well, let's do the next adjacent one. You get the arrow for the field here. Remember, keep it in that row for the field that you want to choose. Click on the arrow. And hey, you can go ahead and let's do first name. Now you can do that, or you can come back up here to the table, and instead of double-clicking, you can click and drag. So if I choose weekly hours, let me hold down the control key and do also hourly rate. So when I click and drag those selections and go to the very next available field, the third one, and let go, it adds them both. And so if I'm like, oh, wait a second, I want hourly rate before weekly hours, what you can do is you can hover over that thin gray bar up at the top above the field here, or the field row, 
until you see a black arrow pointing down because if you move down off of it you don't see it so move so you can see the black arrow click on it it selects the entire column and then you want to make sure that you get the pointer there because if you move down you get the I beam it thinks that you want to edit the name of the field here or change it we don't want to do that so we want to go back up to the top where that gray bar used to be that's now highlighted in black until you can see the pointer and then you can click and drag that guy over and let go and hey that's nice we reordered it so now hourly rate comes before weekly hours and if you made a mess or a boo-boo here and you're like uh, I don't want this well just click on that thin gray bar again above the field that you don't want so you can select it hit the delete key and it's gone or you can let's click on this one select it and do multiple selections by clicking and dragging to the right or left hitting the delete key and now they're all gone and let's go ahead and add those fields back again let's do last name hold down the control key select first name weekly hours hourly rate and click and drag to the first field and there we go last name first name weekly hours hourly rate we'll leave them as is I won't move them around and then to be able to see this in the data sheet view the data within those fields you can come up here on the design tab to the results group click on the view button or the fun run now remember I talked about this in the previous training video some of this what I've already talked about I've covered but let's go over it one more time the run button performs a specific action or an action query because we have a simple select query there's no action except just to view the data but if we want to make a table add data to another table update a field like maybe increase the cost of a field multiply it by a percentage or others cross tab or delete and other additional action queries well when you click run it does two things it actually performs the action here if we want to update or append information to another table and it'll take us to the data sheet view so if I click run data sheet view because it's a select query well there's no action except just to view the data here go back to the design or click the view button which brings up a good point if you have an action before like this one's the probably the most dangerous one or among the top dangerous that if you set your query saying I want to see those records that contain specific information and you want to delete those you may want to check first before you delete them that those are the records you want to delete so if you select delete before you click run and delete them you can click on the view button without running it and checking it first and going oh yeah those are the records I want to get rid of go back to the design then click run and then I'll go ahead and delete all the records and then take you to the data sheet view to show that hey I deleted it in any case in this case it's a simple query a select query so we can click on the view button we're back here last name first name weekly hours hourly rate and you can also move these fields around you can click on the column header select it the entire column and then click on the column header again and move it well in front of weekly hours so now hourly rate comes before weekly hours when I go back to the design view is hourly rate before weekly hours no it's just in the data sheet view not in the design so for you on the back end you may have things set up the way you want to see it as the designer or maybe somebody on the front end doesn't like it and so you're like fine I'll set that up for you so it doesn't mess with my back end view of the way I want to see things and we probably ought to save our query before we get too far and so let's come up here click on the save button and the three letter prefix QRY for query and we'll just do EE for employees and then hit enter and there you go it adds it over here and now it's saved so when I close out I can come over here double click to open it up opens up by default in the data sheet view let me close out and if it doesn't open up in the data sheet view because maybe you got an action query or something else going on or maybe you don't have it set up correctly which we'll cover later on you can right click on it and open it up in design make your changes and fixes before you actually view it couple more things I want to cover and let's go back to the data sheet view now any changes that you make here will update the table which makes sense because it's based upon a table so we're looking at Max Klinger here and he's got the weekly hours of 40 if I come in here and this makes it nice and I change it to 30 it'll update the table because how annoying this would be if I go to all this work and go hey while I'm here let me go ahead and make a change because if it didn't allow me to make the change and I have to go oh it's just right here I'd have to go to the table pull up the employees table make the change so you can see I made the change from 40 to 30 there's the pencil you can click on it and it'll save it or hold down the shift key and hit enter 
So what you do in this one, because it's based upon the table here, employees, when I double click, let's look at Max. Oh boy, we gotta scroll over to find his, there we go, 30, we'll update the other and vice versa. So if I come in here and I go, now let's go back to 40, hold down the shift key, hit enter, then I close out. Hey, it's back to 40. And then finally, let's go back to the design view. You've got these fields here. This little asterisk right up above, I know you were asking me about it, because now's the time to cover it. Let's go ahead and get rid of these fields down below. Click and drag and hit delete. And what that does is when you add the asterisk down below, it adds all these fields to your query, but it puts them in that one field. Because, well, in previous versions of Access, you only get so many spots to add fields to your query. So if you have a lot of tables from tables here and other queries that you're adding, you're adding a lot of fields and you're running out of room, well, just go ahead and let's double click. It adds the whole table, all the fields from that table. You want to see? Alrighty. Click on the Fun Run button. There you go. It's all there. So let's go ahead and go back to the design view. So that way you can go ahead and save some space and not have to, you know, double click on every field or click and drag those fields down below. The only problem with this is that when I want to do a custom calculated field, like I want to create a field here that takes one of these fields, like the hourly rate, and multiply it by 10% because everybody gets a 10% pay increase, I can't do it because it wants to look at that field separately from, well, the asterisks that we added that put all the fields together. So we'll learn about this in a later training video where you can create your own custom field here and say here, let's write a formula or function that will take this field and multiply it by 10%. And it won't do it unless you add that field down below into the grid, even though you've added technically by the asterisk down below all the fields. It has to be its own separate field. So we double click here and then come over here and we would write the function or formula that would actually see that field as a separate field because if you try to write that function or formula without that field there, even though it's there, well, it's not going to work. And you'll see that. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.